Hey everyone, welcome back. This is episode number 7 of the Learning Structured Text with PLCs video series. <sighs> so, you might notice I have spiffied up my, uh, my pizza oven here for this next tutorial. I didn't show that, so don't think you missed anything. Um, basically, I added my pizzas cooked, which I meant to do in the last episode and just forgot. But either way, percent %D there will let you throw an integer in. Um, so I've tweaked the program just slightly, I'll show you in a second, but we need, we have these two new buttons here. The whole scheme is we're going to pretend we're putting a pizza down and the machine can sense that, and that's what this button is. So we're going to put a pizza down. Uh, it should show up here in the visualization. Um, this conveyor will roll a pizza in if there is space in the oven for a pizza. When the pizza's done, this one should automatically roll out into the done pile and we can remove the done pile. So we're going to also write some code that will keep the pizza in the oven from pushing the done pizza off the conveyor. So I don't know how realistic this is, but I think it should demonstrate what I want to do in this video, which is uh, state machines. So state machines essentially are a way to sort of step through finite amounts of code and run only the code you want to run at one time. So a little bit of the problem it solves is when specifically when you're ladder programming you end up with this huge rung and as you're doing a bunch of different like modes or something like that like if auto mode and not manual mode and not setup mode then um, do this but only if the machines in single step mode or um, you know, if, if the recipe number is this, do this, if not, skip it, and just, you end up with this huge thing, uh, rungs and rung, you know, that just go back, zigzag, zigzag, all the way down, um, and you've just got to look through that painstakingly, like, ah, uh, what is going on here, and you take that, of course, and couple that with the fact that it changes faster than you can actually see on the screen, so you end up having to break out software scope views and stuff like that, and it's just a nightmare to debug, and weird race conditions seem to happen all the time where you thought something was done and it wasn't, or whatever. Anyway, we've come to call that a binary bit vector or a bit field of, of twinkling binaries that, that show you basically nothing about what the machine's actually doing at that time. So the way to solve that or the way I typically solve that is using state machines and we're going to pretty much get rid of, a well we're going to move a lot of this code and encapsulate it inside states. So moving on, I need to go ahead, I've added here pizza in oven, pizza done, both of those are new booleans. Um, I also threw a light on there that will just further show why state machines are awesome. Um, and then, um, that should be about it. I'm going to make a few changes here. This cook time will now just become my timer. I'm going to use it all over the place um, for stuff. Um, I need some more queuing bits to throw my... Uh, pizza on the input and output conveyors or take them off so um, b load pizza and I'll call that a boolean b um, remove pizza boolean so I've got those two um, and I could be nice and put some comments but put a pizza on the input side take pizza off output side okay so save that on to the case machine, or the, the case machine, the case statement, which makes up the state machine. So um, I need a state that I can track. So you can encode these in various ways. Um, you can name a bunch of constants. You can do all sorts of stuff to, to actually do this. But the way that works the best for me is to simply make a dent of states. If you never use negative states, you can use a u dent and get a ton more um, states, but you never have that many states, so it's fine. So um, we will do case i state of, and it automatically ends our case statement down here. So what we're saying is this is like an if statement that says if i state is, and then I will put a 10 here. So if it equals 10, we'll do some stuff. Case i state 20, do some stuff. 30, do some stuff. Else, do some stuff. So we have sort of a really complicated if statement that doesn't actually get that complicated um, 
very quickly. So um, what we normally would do is I state is going to be zero to begin with. So what do we want to do in the first state of our oven? Um, you know, we're going to ignore the fact that we got to heat up the oven and stuff like that. I don't know, maybe that'll fit into some future tutorials. But um, basically, this would be the initial machine start state. So it's zero. We need to do something with it. So just to show you um, what the state machine does, I will throw in some dummy variables here. I state equals 20. So what you do here is if some condition comes true, then I will uh, transition my state to 10. And so as this comes through here and it's starting to execute this code, it's going to come in and it's going to say I case I state of, and if I state equals 0, if the condition's true, I state will equal 10. Then the next time through it's going to say, oh, case I state equals 10. Now make it 20 if it's 20 and it's going to carry on like that. The good news is when it's 10, or, or let's say let's say it's zero still and condition is false, it's just going to sit here, but it's going to skip all of this code. So when you're debugging, you don't have to look through all that code. You just have to simply um, look at the value of I state, find out what's in I state and what code runs there. And if if condition in state zero is not true, you go, ah, condition is supposed to be true. Why is it not? Maybe you got a bad sensor, maybe you got something else. So um, there's more benefit than just that, but that's the quick and dirty, like, easy way to understand how this stuff works. Let's try to define what we want in states and what we don't. So basically in our new scheme with the input and output, um, anytime there's a pizza on deck, so anytime there's a pizza here, um, I would venture to say it should just automatically go in. I don't see any problem with doing that. Um, so we'll say if B pizza on, on deck, then um, B pizza on deck equals false, and B pizza in oven equals true. Although we only can do that if not already a pizza in the oven. So basically this is sort of simulate, well let me rephrase that, this is simulating the conveyor actually happening. So bear with me a little bit on some of that stuff. I don't have any hardware here to really to really test with at the moment. So we're sort of pretending as soon as we want it to happen um, if there's room. So we'll say if there is room then if there's a pizza on deck and a pizza not in the oven then turn off the one on the deck turn on the one in the oven so that'll move one in so that's good now we need to know um, what sort of stuff do we want in the state machine and that's anything with this timer um, and moving the pizza out of the oven and stuff like that because things are about to get a little bit more complicated so um, so let's say state zero let's name this state um, State zero should be um, wait for pizza in oven. So we're just going to say if there's a pizza in the oven, then let's go to state 10. That's it. That's all we really need to do. And um, so state 10 would be like uh, we just got a pizza. So we can no or we will no longer run this code as soon as we're not in state 10. So it's going to jump right in here and we should be good. Um, let's go ahead and pull some of this stuff out of here. I'll move it down here so I can copy and paste from it. But um, so state 20, or rather state 10, we just got a pizza. So what do we want to do? We want to start the timer. So let's go ahead and move that in here. And if FB my timer dot Q, then we want to go ahead and go to state 20. So we're just going to sit here and cook it in state 10. So that should be good. We can do some other fancy stuff here that, that's sometimes nice where um, maybe I could do a, a S state description. And I like to sometimes do this. Whoops. What is, where have I gone? State description equals um, baking that pizza now. So we're now baking a pizza and you can put this on your HMI and you can find out exactly what state your code is, what it's waiting on, all that good stuff. So um, 
we would also want to do this here, of course. Um, enter waiting on on pizza now. Whatever. So as soon as that timer elapses, we're all good to go. One trick though is that if this timer is never called false, then it's not going to reset, and that's bad news. So the last thing I do before I leave the state is uh, call it false. And now we know it should be reset to zero for the next time we use that timer. And if it's not running in this state right here, actually, sorry, this should be equals true, just to be generic, um, it would have worked fine, I guess. But technically, that should be good. We got a pizza all as well. So now uh, we need to find out uh, in state 20, can we move the pizza out of the oven? So we'll say if not b what do we call it pizza done b pizza done then um what do we want to do here if there's not a pizza done then uh b pizza in oven equals false and b pizza done equals true so that's sort of simulating our conveyor and this actually literally, if you don't have your conveyor yet, you could put this in and then as soon as you, well, these are sensors really sort of. So, but either way, you would control your conveyor here and it, you could do all that stuff. And so that's sort of why I'm skipping by tens here as well. Uh, tens sort of my default. Sometimes you do a hundred or something if you know you're missing a lot of code. But then I can come in here and add a 15 and be like, uh, you know, um, oops, I forgot something. So you can add that into 15 and you don't have to renumber all these states. So if you have a bunch of complex jumps all around the code and everything, you don't have to go back in and uh, and, and renumber everything And because you're always going to miss one. It's going to be annoying. So um, that's why I do that with some, some gaps there, by the way. Um, so else, if we can't move the pizza out of the oven, but we're done, this is where it kind of gets cool is we, we're in, we know we're in a certain state. So we know that we that we want to move the pizza out of the oven, um, it's going to burn. So um, basically, I need to turn on the buzzer. B buzzer equals true. And so, um, whoops, I'm forgetting stuff all over here. So anyway, we know that's true. We're gonna wait on this, and we're just basically at the mercy of the person to click the B or to uh, tell it that the pizza is done. So we're just gonna sit here. Um, if we are done though, then we can go ahead to uh, I state equals 30. All right, and we don't want to forget before we do that. Um, let's turn the buzzer off and clean up a bit. Okay, so. If we're going to stay in this state, we're going to basically be warning the user, hey, this, this pizza is going to burn if we sit here too long. Um, let's move it out. So as soon as there's no longer one on the output show, or the output conveyor here, um, we're good to go. We'll jump into 30. So um, case 30 is pizza just removed on output tray. So um, basically, we'll see trying to think of what else we need to do. Oh, pizza's cooked. So let's go ahead and increment the pizza's cooked value. And we don't have to worry about all this R-trig business that we did. So we had all this trigger to make sure that only happened once every time a, a new pizza got done. But since we're only going to be in this state for one scan, um, we should be all good to go. So go wait for new pizza in oven. And so the reason, let me uh, get clean this up a little bit. Save it. Okay, so a couple things. The reason this code at the very top here is stateless is because somebody can put a pizza on deck at any time. And we want that thing to go right into the oven if possible. But if there is no pizza in the oven, we don't want to like just wait on you know the one to be removed and all this stuff like we could be in any state here so just keep in mind that you guys sometimes have to check things or watch sensor values or watch something outside of the state machine so um, also you typically would have a lot of parallel state machines for all these parallel processes and things going on in a more complicated machine so um, the last thing would be this else statement here so uh, um, 
we'll call this uh, s state description equals invalid whoops state and so this would be kind of a big error um, if you if you accidentally command the state to a state that doesn't exist your code is going to happily execute but your code's not going to actually do any work it's just going to sit there and and go case okay, so uh, nothing i don't know so this else handles that and you can let the user know hey this is not a valid state to be in um, or you can use that for error handling or whatever um, you can do some other cool stuff with it but um, but anyway a uh, couple key things make sure you turn your timers off um, you can do this in a few ways. You can do this on state transitions automatically. You could do it a number of ways, but this works just fine. Every time you're done with a timer, call it false once to reset it. Uh, that works for me. It's a little bit more typing than, than you have to do, but um, anyway, uh, I did forget some state descriptions on some of these, but I will fix that here in just a second, and let's run the code. Okay, guys, a couple of things I noticed before I... Uh, got online successfully with this PLC was I had double quotes on all these strings and they're supposed to be single quotes. It's not Python. It's not going to do just whatever you throw at it. So uh, that's been fixed now. And uh, I also realized that I didn't handle these new buttons that we put on uh, very well. So let's do that. It actually kind of made my life a little harder, but um, we'll go ahead and do them since I've got them. So if we see the button push, then let's turn the button off. Um, whoops off um, what I've got them set to do is just simply turn on that bit and it's a nice way to debounce it to make sure that while you're holding the button down this thing's not going forever you can do an R trig the same way but this will work just fine so uh, if they push the load pizza button then that puts a B pizza on deck and if there's already one there that's fine for what we're doing so um, let's do the same thing but for um, what did I call it remove pizza so then pizza done equals true or sorry false because we're removing it and pizza uh, let's see b remove pizza equals false wow okay there we go so the pizza's gone the button's off let's see if that works and uh, go on from there Gonna run the PLC. We'll hop over here. So I've had I've added the status string up to the top. That's the one we set in each state. The pizza's cooked here. It looks like I left this thing in some sort of state. So I'll do a reset cold. Yes. Okay. Locked up. Locked up. Log off. Log on. Run. All right. Well, anyway, we're back now. So um, the pizza's cooked is zero now and uh, we're waiting on a pizza so let's put one on see if our code works it went up it went over really quick we didn't see anything boom it's done it automatically moved out that's cool so now we're back to waiting on pizza which is uh, I want to say state zero and the pizza's done we can take it off so let's see okay that's gone that's stateless code it's not stuff that was running in zero it's just always waiting on us to push that button so let's put another one in put one on Q uh, to go in. Oh, that one finished. He moved out. So our new one came in. And now the buzzer's going because we're burning pizza. So let's take this one out. And that one moved over. Everything looks good to me. Let's try to load it up. See how it handles it. Pizza's burning. Take it out. Pizza's cooking. It's burning. Take it out. Take it out. We're good. That's it. We made a sweet state machine. Um, that that does you know it, it the key is that it really controls what code is executing so in each of those states we only look at certain things like this pizza burning turning the buzzer on and things like that this complexity of code you can definitely get away with doing the other way with some timers and things but um say you want to come in and you want to add a, a light when it's done um but not when it's burning like maybe there's a timer in here um, you know it gets more and more complex and uh, you just it gets to be a nightmare so anyway the state machine is uh, what I like to do I'll zoom out a little bit here so you can see it um, 
but that's the code we wrote. State. It's got three, four separate states, and uh, you get to get rid of all these R trigs and all this stuff that happens. And uh, something I like to do as well, which I'll touch on more, is uh, I like to make an array that stores the history of the states. So if something strange happens, you can have like a hundred uh, copies of that state. And you can see exactly where it went, where it transitioned, all that kind of stuff. So um, the state machines often will, will branch off. So 10 will jump around some stuff. Like uh, if it's a deep dish pizza, we cook twice as long or, you know, anything like that. You can make all these different states and have options to to route parts through the machine in different ways and, and all kinds of good stuff like that. So that's what I wanted to cover on this video. It's probably long enough. Um, so... Stick with me, and uh, I'll teach you some more stuff about this, and uh, I'll see you next time.